What's up guys, Answer No Hoops back today with another video. And today I am breaking down what I think will probably be the most competitive second round series of the playoffs. And that is going to be none other than the Denver Nuggets versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. And Minnesota has already stolen the home court advantage from Denver, putting a real exclamation point on this series in terms of this team is legit. They were not just playing a poorly run, all big name team. They are here to compete with the best of the best, with the reigning champs. And today, we're going to get into what both teams have shown and what they need to do to improve, or if you're the Timberwolves, sort of stay the course and really help figure out how this series is going to come out. Now, I think the biggest thing that we see the Timberwolves do was one, they force Jokic to be much more of a scorer, and two, we see how versus the Lakers, right, because AD did a great job with Jokic, but this team having multiple bigs, right, so you have Rudy, Cat, Nas Reed, like having those three guys to sort of be able to cycle through throughout a game to help compete against Jokic is going to be so important, right, so let's get into it. So Jokic here gets a little screen action. Right, KCP beautiful right over the top, but Cat closes out, right? And right before Jokic can get back in, there's Rudy, right? Again, showing the issues that this too big defense can really provide against Jokic, right? Again, Nas Reed, not letting Jokic really get his ground in, stays very close, right? And misses. That, I think, is a big part of it. it it's what this defense can effectively do to Jokic in terms of making shots harder and Jokic not being able to sort of be like, okay, once, well, for example, with the Lakers series, once I get past AD, the rim is basically mine. I'm kind of chilling. Here, right, like let's say Cat's on him. He rolls past Cat, there's Rudy. Or he rolls past Rudy, there's Nas Reed. Like he can, now obviously Jokic is still going to get his buckets. However, up until I believe towards the end of the game, this is one of Jokic's like worst playoff games. Field goal in the 30% until, you know, again, the end, he got it up to 44. But let's continue. I think the other big factor here, and I talked about this in the Lakers series, Jamal Murray, right? Gets the screen action here with Jokic. And again, I think part of this is Rudy's here. So Jamal's like, I can't attack the rim with Rudy. So now he forces this tough little floater. And then Cat gets the ball, able to help start facilitating and pushing to the next level. Right? Now you have Ant fight over the staggered screen. Now, and some of this is also Jamal, honestly, is missing stuff he would normally make. Like, last year, everyone in their mama going, that's a bucket. 6-3. Keep it going. But instead, right... Look at what McDaniels does here. Fights right over Jokic. Cat stays. Roams over. Now, this is how you respond if you're the Nuggets. And you might be saying, Emster, what do you mean? What, what? To me, if that double big attention does, in fact, seek, like heat seek into Jokic, have Aaron Gordon, any, any, any of your other players, basically, run a back door. Because at this point, right, like, let's just take a look again on this play. Jokic gets the screen, right? Sets the screen. Alexander Walker fights over it. Aaron Gordon is rolling to the rim. But you see Nikhil, Cat, Rudy, all fixated on this possible, you know, floater by Jokic. But instead, right, right behind him. Now, again, you obviously can't spam it all game. Or maybe you could. I mean, shoot. The Lakers should have done it, and they didn't do it. So, And so, if they're going to have to find a hole in this Minnesota defense, that's how I would personally try and go about it, is having, because basically if Jaden McDaniels or Ant is committing to Jamal, and we'll say like a KCP or MPJ, MPJ and Jamal, you have KCP, possibly Aaron Gordon, uh, Christian Brown, Peyton Watson, all capable cutters. 
So that's how I would attack if I'm Denver and if I'm Michael Malone sitting in the film room or, you know, talking with the guys like, hey, this is what we need to do. Let's get let, yoke. I need you actively looking like you're going to attack because it's not going to work if you're standing on the perimeter. Attack, force a double, force some form of attention. Let's get a guy back door. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about Anthony Edwards just yet again. It's his legitimate coming out party, like his stamp on the league. So, Christian Brown pushing Ant standing, standing. Nikhil actually does a good job here because he helps force Christian to wait. But again, Ant just always an active defender getting the SWAT, right? And I here's the other thing. If I'm Minnesota, Ant. Take that rim every single time. I love this play. So it's a it's a fake screen, right? Like Ant is acting as if he's going to set the screen. And you see Jamal's focus on Conley. And Conley's even kind of pointing to Ant like, yo, this is all yours, brother. Because for whatever reason, Jokic is out here with Gobert. So he just goes, see ya. And there's nothing that you can do about that. Right, and that's what I love about what he's doing. And again, right, gets a little, you know, uncomfortable. Reggie Jackson actually played some decent defense on him. But again, yes, forces his way because look, Jokic, like, and this again, I genuinely believe this. I mean this wholeheartedly. If the Denver Nuggets lose in this series, I genuinely believe a top three reason why, or, you know, like among the top three reasons, Jokic's defense is going to have to be up there. Like, Jokic, at this point, slide over. Why are you waiting so long? Right? At this point, it's just it's just futile. There's nothing he can do. But when Ant starts to go this way along baseline, Jokic, close it off to him right here. Even if you give up a foul, make it harder for him. Like, the paint's just free. Uh, that's going to be a big thing. Like, again, Gordon, Aaron Gordon's on him, right? Ant just uses the sheer speed. Yoke doesn't really do anything. Like, I think the Lakers series sort of showed it. And last year, I think, for some people, I genuinely believe this, had people tricked in terms of Jokic is this above... A- I think aver- I think Jokic, Nikola Jokic, at best, is a average defender. But the thing that makes him so great is that he's an all-time elite, 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 elite offensive player that it can make up that gap. However, when the Nuggets offense is looking like it is in these last two series, it most certainly does not look like that defensive, you know, liability gets, you know, can get canceled out. Jokic has to step up as a, you know, rim defender, like slide over. Like, if it's just you and the brim, you know where Ant's going. But instead, right, just absolutely attacks the brim. And I know you guys are thinking, too, like, why aren't you showing clips of Rudy? Why aren't you showing clips of Cat? Because, quite frankly, with those two, they're playing similar to what they're doing in Phoenix. Because Aaron Gordon... Loves the sort of, and understandably so, with the way they run their system. Dunker spot, low paint. So Rudy gets to kind of be where Rudy loves to be, in the paint. Jaden McDaniels and Ant get to go cover Jamal and MPJ and make their life hell to score. And then, at that point, he's basically, can KCP and Aaron Gordon beat me? And for the Timberwolves, they're saying, no shot. Denver's issue is, is that as good as Aaron Gordon is, if they get past him and Jokic is the last line of defense with him in that rim, it is most likely going to end up in the opposition scoring points, easy points. Like, and especially for guys like Ant, if you let them get their rhythm, whether it's easy from just layups, dunks, whatever it is, that could be even more deadly than like just about anything. It's the same thing even with Jamal Murray. If Jamal Murray gets going early, things could get real dangerous real quick because a team like that might just put their foot on the gas and they never even bother looking back. All right. 
But just look at what Ant, again, just making, and again, the defense leads to incredible offense. It's transition play, forcing turnovers. This is what this guy can do. And that's what this team can do. Now, quite frankly, I had actually picked Denver to advance out of the second round. But as I've watched them this playoffs, it is abundantly clear that this is not quite the same team that we saw before last year. I'm going to be 100% honest. If you told me, like if you came from the future, I remember weeks in the future, and you were like, hey, Emster, the Timberwolves beat the Nuggets. I think at the beginning of the year, I'd have been like, you're crazy. What the hell are you talking about? But right now, I wouldn't really be shocked. The team is beatable. And in, in part, it's because of their own shortcomings versus even what Minnesota is doing. So, let me know what you guys think down below. Do you agree with my assessments? Do you think Jokic's defense is a big reason why they're losing? So far, obviously, it's one game. The series isn't over. Um, what do you guys think each team should continue to do to make sure that they can come out of this victor? And quite frankly, the way that these two teams are looking, like if you're the Nuggets, right, and you had all these, you know, leads blown or, you know, comebacks, you sort of have that mentality that you could fight back out of anything. And if you're Minnesota, you've just been dominating. They still haven't lost a playoff game. So let me know what you guys think down below. This was Amsterdam No Soups. Have a beautiful rest of your day, guys. Peace out. Thank you.